KGO. We got Chief William Bill Scott. He's the new police chief in San Francisco. Welcome. Do you always get, you know, he's going to cut it that close. Is that the way it works? <laughs> no, just a number of things happening this morning. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Can't let him distract you. You got to keep your eye on the prize. Hey, can I start off with something you may not like, but I've got to be honest. And I've said this before. Uh, there was a period where I did the show that was both here in San Francisco and in L.A. for a year. And during that year, I got to at least experience what it was like in L.A. And I cannot think of two police departments that are more different than the SFPD or the L.A. Uh, in L.A., you get the feeling that, it, I hate to say, it's almost Gestapo-like. I mean, you go a half an inch too far and you get a ticket. Here, you got a cop. He's having a margarita at, at Tia Margarita or something like that. Uh, it. It's, I know it's hyperbolic, but there is a big difference in the culture, isn't there? There are some differences. There are some differences, but the core work is very similar. The core work, I mean, the actual nuts and bolts of, of policing a city, is, it's, it's very similar. That I would understand, but I think it's, the, it's just the way it comes off to the public. I mean, I've taught my girls the cop's your friend because in San Francisco they're your friend. I don't, do they teach kids in L.A. that the cop's your friend, or do they say, hey, you better do the right thing? Oh, no, actually, they, they do. So, I mean, in Los Angeles, I, I can just say from my experience, um, that is taught. And, you know, it, it's a different, like you said, culturally, I think things are different in the two departments. But um, the whole, particularly right now in Los Angeles, what's going on is, you know, that whole relationship-based policing and, and, and how that impacts our ability to effectively police it's very much a real thing there. So, um, you know, the, San Francisco, ironically, has a um, has quite a history of actually doing that for a long time. Right. So it's really uh, it's nice to be a part of that as well because it we're in. in the, I was reading something this morning on um, <clears throat> of, of actually a presidential commission report from uh, the Johnson administration, and they reference how San Francisco did a good job in community relations and community policing and had encouraged other law enforcement agencies to do that. This is from the 1960s. So we do have a, a great culture of doing that, to your point. How, and, how many people, how many officers did you have in L.A.? Uh, me personally or the the, city? the department? The department, the department has about 10,000. And we have, what, about 2,000, roughly? Yeah, a little bit over 2,000. Right. Right. And it, it makes this, is it harder or easier given the fact that the city is more compact? Well, it's got its challenges. I mean, it's, 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 the city is not as big as in Los Angeles as you can attest to, but it's a major U.S. city, an international city, and it's very compact. So it has its challenges. I mean, proportionally, I think the number of officers per, per 10,000 is really pretty similar in L.A. and San Francisco. L.A. is 465 square miles. San Francisco is 49 square miles. So yeah. the density is 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 not even comparable. I, I know you're going to have to say, well, everything is great and all that, but we'll go beyond that. The idea that you are a police chief selected from outside the ranks of the police officer. Tony, Tony was supposed to be, everybody's mind, he was going to be the police chief and then there introduced you and then read about you and you seem like a good guy. But I mean, how tough is that? Because by and large, uh, cops want one of their own. For me, it's not tough. Um, and I hope we well, are the boss. It shouldn't well, be tough. I mean, you know, it, it, there are some challenges. You, yeah. You know, when I was in L.A., I was in Los Angeles for 27 years, so I knew I knew a lot of people, knew the organization really well. Um, you 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 grow up in the organization with your colleagues, and so all the deputy chiefs and the assistant chiefs, I knew they knew me. I mean, they knew my first name. They knew my family. You know, uh, they knew what I was about. When you come in to an organization, uh, not growing up in an organization, you have to start from scratch. So that, that can be a challenge. And it can be a challenge starting from scratch at the top because you don't really get to build the relationships like you do typically in an organization. I mean, every police department in this country, usually, you start from the bottom and grow up. Um, so, Which is what you did when you get look at L.A. Did, exactly. Yeah. But coming into, you know, San Francisco and to uh, the San Francisco PD, I'm starting at the top. So building the relationships with people doing the work is a little bit more challenging. And, and so that has to be done in a certain way to, to be done right. Got to have a good instinct on it, too, because the difference is if you're working your way up and you get to know people, that that, that breeds like a family kind of an attitude. Right. right now, when it's the opposite with you, you don't know if somebody's really being genuine and say, hey, you know, this Bill guy's a good guy or the guy's just sucking up. 
you got to know the difference. Yeah, you do. You do have to know the but difference. But you're a cop. You should be able to tell that difference. Yeah, we, I think I got pretty good instincts. But, you know, I, I just I, I come in with an uh, open mind and an open heart and, and try to look at people by their actions. Because at the end of the day, after a little while, you get to see who's for real and who's not. And people uh, tend to reflect whether they're for real or not by what they do, not by what they say. Well, one more, one more question about L.A., and then we'll move to other things. Okay. Giants or Dodgers? Uh, both. <laughs> if, I, if, if, that's a, if that's an answer. But, there is so, no answer. So that, here's the thing. Ridiculous. I'm a Dodgers fan, and I've been one since. Out! Even, even, <laughs> even before I moved to Los Angeles. But I'm an NL West guy, so if that, and people think that's weird, but if that is, uh, if the Dodgers and the Giants aren't playing each other, hey, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. And what the if they are so. playing each other? And then I got to go with the blue. So, I mean, that's hard for me to say. You know, you had a bunch of, you got a bunch of police officers around you. You got to take more if you're going to ATT. Or play <laughs> I know. A, a police know. chief who's going to root for the Dodgers. Uh, well, I like that. I'm an NL West fan. I've never heard that. I'm an NL West fan, yeah. but I'm, I'm just a sports fan. I mean, I love sports. So, I mean, it's, it's, this is such Look a Look at our moment. Niners. Look at you. There's, there's a, something that's encouraging. Anyway, Bill Scott, 808 He's the new chief. Feel free to jump in any questions you've got. We're just getting to know him. It's 11-12. Ron Owens, KGO. KGO 810. You watch that show? Streets of San Francisco? Yeah, I did. I used to watch it. I did. It was uh, one of my favorites when I was Who did it star? Paul Malden. And and Michael Douglas. There you go. All right. Sure. Very good. San Francisco's new police chief, William Bill Scott, is here. Okay, we'll just say Bill Scott. That's easy enough. Uh, you, before you got appointed by uh, uh, by Mayor Lee, I'm sure you got a little bit of a feeling for what it was like to be a chief in the city. And the, the last two chiefs, you had Greg Sir and previous to that, George Gascon. How are you different from these guys? Or are you very much the same? <clears throat> well, I think we all have. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're all different. Uh, my style in terms of, of uh, policing, first of all, we have personalities that are different. I mean, I've, I've met both, and both are very nice men in terms of I, I, very good, good people with good hearts, uh, in my opinion. But we're different in terms of our personalities, our approach. You know, I've always been, I think, and this is not to say that the previous chiefs weren't this, but I can tell you that I am more of a collaborative type of person. And um, I... I Prescribe to the adage that you can get a lot more done when you collaborate effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes in law enforcement, that can go against the instincts of taking charge and just getting it done because many times, particularly when you grow up in, in policing, that's what you do. You get called to a call and you have to solve the problem, get it done, and, and go to the next call. And that kind of gets ingrained in your culture. Well, we know, and academic research supports this, I believe, that collaboration, particularly with all the challenges we face, is the best way to do business. And I'm not saying that the other two chiefs weren't. I know that's really what I'm made of. That's in my DNA. Um, In terms of how I approach the troops, how I approach um, my leadership style, is very much one that is uh, situational, I think, in terms of um, you, you have to you have to lead based on what's in front of you. You know, you can't come in with just one type of leadership paradigm, if right. you will. You have to lead based on what's in front of you. We're, we, have a, we have a young department here in San Francisco, and that's a good thing, but it's a different type of leadership because when you have a lot of youth, particularly in the patrol ranks, your leadership has to be more of you have a lot of energy. Now you have to provide the guidance and the training and, the, and everything that you need to make that energy go in a positive direction. When you have an older force, you don't necessarily you have to you have to keep up the training, but you don't have to invest as much in the formation of, of shaping people's thoughts. But you got to work to jack them up to make sure they keep that, that energy. You have to keep them going in the right direction. Yeah. So you still have to lead them. But in terms of uh, officers that have tenure, you should know what they're doing. You know, if you have 20 years on, on the job, you should know what you're doing. But you have to keep up on your training. But it's a different style of leadership. So I've always been a situational person. And right now we have a young department. You know, the majority of our patrol forces are less than 10 years with the department. So it, it requires a leadership style that, that matches that. 
let, let me talk priorities a little bit. I mean, the average person you ask in San Francisco, what's the biggest thing that's on your mind? It's usually homeless. And every police chief says they're going to do something about homelessness. And in frankness, nothing really can be done. It doesn't seem that anything can be done. But what, what priorities are you most interested in? What are you least interested in? I mean, we're a city, for example, who uh, has supported weed for God knows how long. Uh, that's not going to be a priority, no matter what Trump tells you, I would presume. So what's important to you? What are the, what are the most important things that you think you as a police chief are going to steer your department towards? Well, there's, okay, let me start with our, our first objective, and that's to keep our city safe. That That's number one. Right. Um, you know, a lot goes into that, but that's first and foremost, um, violent crime. I mean, we, we just had a, a triple shooting yesterday that resulted in the death of a of an innocent bystander, it, you know, that is not acceptable in any city. Yeah. So we have to keep the focus where it belongs. Uh, property crime is a huge issue in our city. Cars getting broken into, cars getting stolen, that type of thing, it's a huge issue. And there are other things that feed into that, which I'll address really briefly. But people, I live in the city, you want to feel safe, that you can go out and enjoy the city and not be robbed, not be accosted or, or when you come back to your car, it's like you left it. So if you're not doing that, you're, you're, as a law enforcement, if we're not doing that, that basic tenet of law enforcement, we're not doing our jobs. So that's, to, that's first. I ought to say, by the way, just as parenthetically, that I'm in the Richmond district and they send a, a newsletter out each week and they keep emphasizing. So I say this is a public service. Don't keep anything in your car. Stick it in your trunk. Otherwise, you're going to come back and it ain't going to be there. I've only had that happen four times in 41 years, so that's pretty good. Yeah, but, man, you know, part of it is education, and part of it is you know, uh, the collaboration with the community is having us as citizens take responsibility to not be an easy target, so that is important. Okay, now back yeah. to your priorities. Priorities, okay, secondly, um, work begins with, with the people. I mean, you, we have to take care of the department in terms of the wellness of the officers, giving the officers what they need to do their job. You know, me... Being a new chief, it's really important that I gain the trust of the officers because if they don't trust me as a chief to lead them, it's not going to work. So coming in as a new chief, I really got to work hard to earn the trust of the officers to get the other things done. Uh, one of the other priorities that is right at the top of the list is the the Department of Justice Collaborative Reform Initiative, the reforms. Mm -hmm. And that's well, part of the reason. used to that. You had that in L.A. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and that's part of the reason that, that I was brought here, I think, is to bring some, some different eyes onto that issue. Uh, but that's a huge priority because if we get those 272 recommendations implemented, we're going to be a better department that allows us to do the number one priority, public safety, in a better way, in what? a way that, you know, people will accept and better and, and people will embrace and, and join in to help with that effort. One of the things you talked about was equipment. Uh, what about tasers? Because that's been a big mm -hmm. issue here. Yeah, tasers is, all, is a huge issue here. And, and so where we are on that right now is one of the recommendations, the DOJ recommendations, is that the police commission uh, consider it. And my understanding is the police commission will do just that. They, they will, did before, and they said no, inexplicably, yeah. I might add. And, and there's a process to that. My personal view and my professional view, rather, is I, su I support, I, I, I would like to have them as a tool. I think it's a good tool. 27 years with me in Los Angeles, I've always had the availability of tasers as a tool. You know, I know there is some research that says that uh, there are situations where things have gone awry, but the majority, the, the overwhelming majority uses of taser doesn't result in that those type of calamities it's a good tool it's a good tool that can prevent us from having to go to that higher level of force so i support it uh, chief chief bill scott is here that's why i jump in and say you know who you are and who i am and then we go to uh chief bill scott is here 8080810 be a little gentle with him he hasn't gone through his first critical mass yeah i'll ask him about that too 8080810 let's continue